Hello everyone. This is Dr. Mubashra and today I will teach you a very important short case in the clinical medicine exam and that is facial nerve examination. It will be a brainstorm session so please watch the video till the end. Today we will discuss about introduction, steps of facial nerve examination, relevant examination of facial nerve and how to differentiate between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron type of facial palsy on your clinical examination and then formulate the management plan and conclusion. So coming towards the introduction. The facial nerve provides motor innervation of facial muscles that are responsible for facial expression, parasympathetic innervation of the glands of oral cavity and the lacrimal gland and sensory innervation of anterior two-third of the tongue. Now coming towards the steps of examination. Whatever the command you get in your medicine exam, start accordingly. The command can be look at the face and examine neurologically, examine the lower six cranial nerves or examine the mixed motor and sensory cranial nerves. Or just a simple command that examine the facial nerve of this patient and do the relevant examination. So whatever your command is, start your examination accordingly. First of all, you will sanitize your hands. Then start from greeting, then your introduction and then inform consent from the patient. After that, you have a general look on the patient and start by asking the patient to look up towards the ceiling or crease your forehead. Then ask the patient to close his eyes tightly as much as he can and don't let you open the eyes. Then ask the patient to blow air in his mouth and meanwhile also look for loss of nasolabial fold. Then in the last step of your facial nerve examination, you will ask the patient to show his teeth to you or even you can ask that can you please smile for me. Here are the few pictures which show these steps. For example, you are asking the patient to crease up the forehead or look towards the ceiling. Keep eyes closed against the resistance. Show me your teeth and puff out the cheeks. Then coming towards the relevant examination of facial nerve. The relevant examination is divided into two parts. One is cranial nerve examination and other is upper limb and lower limb examination. In cranial nerve examination, 6th, 8th, 9th and 10th that is abducent, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve are relevant. On examination of the 6th cranial nerve, you will make an H movement in order to examine the extraocular muscles. If the 6th cranial nerve is involved, the patient will not be able to abduct his one eye. For 8th cranial nerve examination, you need to check the hearing of the patient in each ear. You will ask the patient to occlude his one ear with the fingers and you will check the hearing in the opposite ear by just rubbing your fingers together and again repeat this step with the other ear. For 9th and 10th cranial nerve, you will do an R test. That is, you will ask the patient to open his mouth, throw light in his mouth with the torch and ask him to say ah and meanwhile you will check the movement of palate. Gag reflex is not recommended in the exam. Now coming towards the upper limb or lower limb examination, here the pronator drift is very important. You will ask the patient to stretch their arms and palms will be facing towards the ceiling. Then ask the patient to close his eyes and within a few seconds you will be able to assess the weaker side. However, pronator drift can only be performed if the power is at least 3 or 3 plus. By assessing the power of the patient by pronator drift, you can assess that whether it is crossed hemiplegia or uncrossed hemiplegia as it can be a part of millard gobler syndrome which is basically ipsilateral palsy of 6th and 7th cranial nerve with contralateral hemiplegia. Then another very important thing in your facial nerve examination is cerebellar signs. 
दैट इज यू विल चेक द हाइपोटोनियम पेंडुलर नी चक निस्टैगमस फिंगर नोज टेस्ट डिस्ट डायलोको कानीजिया हील शीन टेस्ट एंड सेरिबैलर ए टेक्सिया इवन योर रेलिवेंट एग्जामिनेशन डज नॉट फिनिश हेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू फाइंड दैट दिस पेशन हैज बिन सफरिंग फ्रॉम लोअर मोटर निरॉन टाइप ऑफ फेशियल पॉलिसी देन ईयर एग्जामिनेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू विल नॉट ओनली लुक इन साइड द ईयर बट ऑल्सो इन फ्रंट ऑफ द ईयर एंड बिहाइंड द ईयर फॉर एनी वेजिकल्स विच कैन बी प्रेजेंट ऑल्सो यू नीड टू असेस द पेरोटेड ग्लैंड दैट वेदर देयर इज एनी पेरोटेड मैस और पेरोटेड सर्जरी Now coming towards how to differentiate between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron type of facial palsy during your clinical examination. If it is an upper motor neuron type of facial palsy, there will be sparing of the upper face. That is, upper spares the upper. Wrinkling will be present. Frowning positive. Only finding will be in the lower face. There will be loss of nasolabial fold on the affected side. and facial deviation towards the normal side however in lower motor neuron type of facial palsy upper face will be involved wrinkling will be absent patient will not be able to close his one eye and patient will be unable to blow air on the affected side loss of nasolabial fold on the affected side as well as facial deviation towards the normal side remember the famous saying looks always deceive so in facial palsy facial deviation will be towards the opposite normal side here is the picture which shows on the left side it is lower motor neuron type of facial palsy which is also called as bell's palsy whenever it is lower motor neuron type of facial palsy the lesion can be at the level of pons that is facial nucleus of pons or it can be at the level of cerebellum or facial canal or geniculate ganglion or even the lesion can be at the level of parotids so you have to assess these four or five sites in order to uh, assess the level of lesion in case of lower motor neuron type of facial palsy in bell's palsy the lesion is mostly at the level of facial canal and in ramsey hunt syndrome the lesion is mostly at the level of geniculate ganglion on the right side of this picture there is a patient with stroke here the type of facial nerve palsy is upper motor neuron type of palsy and here the lesion will be supranuclear again this picture showing lower motor neuron and upper motor neuron type of facial palsy um in lower motor neuron type of facial palsy the whole one half of the face will be affected however upper motor neuron will only involve the lower half of the face here there is a picture of patient which shows facial nerve palsy that the patient is unable to wrinkle drooping of eyelid inability to close the eye inability to puff the cheek asymmetrical smile and drooping corner of the mouth now coming towards the etiology of facial palsy the most common cause of lower motor neuron type of facial palsy is bell's palsy and the most common cause of upper motor neuron type of facial palsy is stroke other causes are tumors lyme disease guillain-barre syndrome multiple sclerosis hiv there are certain systemic conditions in which there can be facial palsy for example diabetes hypertension sarcoidosis and even vasculitis again the causes of facial palsy bell's palsy most common cause and it itself has multiple causes stroke in the form of millard gobler syndrome multiple sclerosis and tumors this can be cp angle tumor even vestibular schwannomas and acoustic neuroma infections in the form of lyme disease hiv ramsey hunt syndrome and guillain-barre syndrome these are a few animated pictures which show facial palsy and one is a real patient now coming towards the investigations 
that is how to investigate a patient of facial palsy even before starting your investigations you have to take complete history and detailed neurological examination of the patient and investigations are ordered on the basis of your clinical provisional diagnosis the investigations are divided into three uh, types for example you can order some imaging some blood test and certain specific investigations according to your calls these include ct brain mri brain fasting lipid profile blood sugar levels hp1c level nerve conduction study electromyography hiv serology and lime antibody testing now coming towards the treatment the treatment is usually divided into three parts general medical and surgical in general management patient education counseling and explanation regarding the disease physiotherapy eye protection topical ocular therapy eye lubricants eye drops and the medical treatment is basically according to your underlying cause for example if it is a case of bell's palsy then you can start oral corticosteroids within 72 hours and if there is any suspicion of viral infection then you can give antiviral therapy and the surgical treatment includes facial nerve decompression fat lift strip procedures the conclusion whenever you are dealing with facial nerve palsy in your medical practice outpatient department and wards find out the underlying cause rule out your risk factors and formulate your management plan accordingly thank you so much for watching this video stay blessed all the best allah hafiz